Online Broadcast Network. After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Yeah, I learned a game from William Wesley. Hey, you never hey, it. hey. Back to back for the niggas that didn't get the message. Ooh, and, 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 and we throwing curse words in here too, man. Let's to go. Like What's Jordan up, After Blood TV? Welcome to the football, the football off-season show. I am your host, Brandon London, at Cultured Athlete on Twitter. Make sure you hit us up at After Buzz. Man, we got a show for y'all today, or well, I got a show for y'all today, but I got some friends in studio. I have some people calling in. First and foremost, let's talk about the ones that are in studio. For Canada, for UCLA, for Ottawa, yeah. representing the Ottawa Red Blacks, yeah, Brendan yeah, yeah. Sermons, DB, what's going on, yeah, man? Not much, man. Hanging like snot in here. How you doing? Hanging yeah, like snot. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Hey, and representing... Former Detroit Lions, speed specialist, yeah. fastest man in the world, as he calls himself, enough, yeah. Mr. Paul Pratt. What's going on? Pound for pound, the fastest man in the world. I'm, really, I'm feeling very, very, very fast right now as we speak. Hey, I, yeah. pre- I appreciate yeah. I appreciate you guys for coming in. I appreciate, I appreciate you, having you guys us, coming in. That. Everyone, they're pretty they're pretty much probably watching the Oscars right now. You know, all that controversy and stuff. But Sunday is for church. And it's for football. And sports, I mean. Church and football. Yeah. Church and football. football, hands down. Hands down. We've also got calling in <laughs> Kelly Bell, CFL podcaster, the Let's Talk Football podcast in, uh, in Canada. And we also have Skyping in Winnipeg Blue Bombers defensive tackle, Bryant Turner. We have 30 minutes talking CFL, then we switch over and we go 30 minutes of NFL. Yeah, baby. Live on the line right now. Live on the line. <laughs> CFL analyst Kelly Bell, the man he he does it all, man. The guy's got his own CFL podcast. Like I said, let's talk football. He's uh he's been a journalist for 15 years and he's accredited with the with the great website lastwordonsports.com. Hailing from Regina, Saskatchewan. Kelly, what's going on, man? Nothing much, Brandon. Thank you very much for that great introduction, and I'm just pleased to be here talking about CFL football. Man. Oh man, thanks for coming on, man. I, I've uh, for sure. look, I've looked at the, I've re- uh, listened to the podcast. I've seen, uh, you know, some of your publications and such. And you're a man of CFL football. You're a really good writer. You're a really good analyst. So I thought that I would have you on. So let's talk some CFL off season. Uh, have you ever t- have you have you met or ever talked with uh, Brandon Sermon of the Ottawa Red Blacks? No, actually, I'm not familiar uh, with Brandon, but, uh, yeah, hey, what's hey. going on with Brandon? Not yeah, much, man. How you doing? Not so much, man. Nice to meet you. Well, yeah, let me uh, familiarize you with, with myself. I play for the Red Blacks on number 21, uh, corner out there. Uh, started, in right. the gray, started in the Grey Cup this year, and this is our, our second season after after being belt back, so... We're doing pretty. We're doing. We did pretty well last season, man. Oh, he he knows. He 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 covers. He covers the CFL. He knows all that. Wait, hold on. What was what was the name of the city you in right now? I'm in LA I'm in right Regina. now. Oh, Regina. Oh, Regina. Oh, Regina. <laughs> Saskatchewan. Yeah, okay. Saskatchewan. Yeah. He doesn't know this. This is Paul Pratt. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah Regina. You was former, trying to figure it out. I was like, what is this? Former, uh, former, uh, D- uh, Detroit Lions defensive back Paul Pratt. He doesn't really know the CFL, so we're gonna. We're going to omit him a little bit in this conversation. He's going to have to listen to the good times we have up there. But, Kelly, uh, tell us kind of what your thoughts are on the CFL, the free agency with the combine coming up. Uh, what, what, what are you thinking about some of the moves that have been made? Oh, man, it's been nuts, hey, guys? Like, this offseason has been great. And, you know, uh, fans and players alike, I think everybody's getting into it. Uh, you know, it started just a week after Grey Cup when yeah. we all heard that uh, Chris Jones was going to be yeah. back in his you-know-what and uh, moving to Regina. So, you know, it's been really exciting around here in particular, but also in places like Winnipeg, um, you know, Edmonton. Um, I'm hearing their fans very happy with, uh, you know, some of the acquisitions and re-signs that they've made. So they, th- they still think they can have a great 
football club. And, of course, Brandon will tell us the Ottawa Red Blacks, their fans and their players are saying, hey, we're pretty excited to get back there next year as well. So uh, yeah. I'm loving what's been happening. And, yeah, I just can't wait for, uh, you know, the CFL uh, – uh, Canadian draft to take place here and, and get through these uh, combines, of course, and see how everybody grades out in, in all the different events. And, uh, yeah, it's just going to be an exciting couple months leading up to the season. So is bef- it June yet? Before, yeah, is hashtag it is yet? it June yet? That's the hashtag right yeah. there in case anyone doesn't know um, CFL football. June is when, the, is when the training camp starts up there. So, Kelly, what's been the biggest move you'd say in free agency so far? Oh, my God. Uh, I think that would have to be Trevor Harris to, you know, the Ottawa Red Blacks. I mean, this is a kid who's just, you know, on that threshold of becoming, uh, you know, uh, the best quarterback in the CFL. Like, I mean, I'll go out and say it. I mean, he he honestly has. He is uh, is pretty nice. I like him. Yeah, he has some real skills. And, you know, it's going to be exciting to see what he can do uh, once Henry kind of, you know, ultimately steps aside in Ottawa. I, I really think with those four receivers who got a thousand and another receiver <laughs> capable of it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's that's a good place for him to be. So, who would you say which team is having the best off season up to this point right now? Well, a lot of people would point to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers mm-hmm. because they've had the most moves, really, and and maybe Saskatchewan as well, and. Uh, you know, maybe uh, Hamilton, you got to give them a little bit of props for having the courage to let some of the guys go that they did. Uh, I guess that's more of an economic situation, but I don't know. I, I would have to uh, ultimately give it to uh, Ottawa, really. Uh, oh, wow. You know, I, I, I can't course. really say that they lost a whole lot. It's, it's really Ottawa and Edmonton. I, I believe they retained the right guys. Oh. I, I have to agree with you on that. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, Winnipeg spent a lot of money. That's 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 what I see. I see Jim Pop yeah. restructuring a lot of guys' contracts, bringing in Deron Carter, uh, the Trevor Harris move. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to, you know, debate with you on that one because I don't think that he's <laughs> he's gonna be one of the best quarterbacks in the CFL. There's still Matt Nichols. Uh, I really think that he's a really good uh, quarterback, and he has a uh, Bowman out there. So that's a hundred catch guy, obviously. Um, yeah. And then there's Zach Kalaros. Being, I understand he's down. He's still uh, injured right now. And I read something on CFL.com the other day when it just said that uh, he should be back for training camp. But that guy, That's the right. way he moves, if he comes back somewhat healthy, because remember, it's a long season, and I, I expect him to struggle for a little bit. What Hamilton has done in this all season, bringing in guys like Chad Owens and such and, and uh, re-signing guys, I think Hamilton would pretty much, and I hate saying it. Ooh, I hate saying it because I hate playing at Hamilton. Um, I really think yeah. that they would be the team to beat in, in, in the CFL this year. For sure. And, and really, all of that has to do with can Zach stay healthy and, yeah. and can that line keep him upright. Uh, they... Let's see. They lost one guy to free agency off of that line, I believe, O'Neal to yeah. Calgary. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, uh, yeah, they're they're pretty intact from last year, and and you know, you've seen what they can do over the last two years, making it the Grey Cups. So, it's yeah, it, you know, it all depends on Calero. So that's that's the. What do you think about you know um, the prospects? Caleros gets injured, and then you have. Uh, one of either Jeff Matthews, I guess, or uh, who is it, former Oregon Duck, uh, Jeremiah Mazzoli. See, we, we played against Mazzoli. You know, I retired yeah. last June, and I played against that guy a couple times. I, I think he can run around, but I, I don't think that he's a guy that can make those throws when you're supposed to make those throws in the CFL. You know what I mean? That's not That's hating right. or anything, but I've seen facts him are play. Facts. facts are facts. are facts. And as a DB, uh, Brandon, would you rather play against a guy who you know – can run or a guy where you're like, all right, I got to stay in coverage because this guy, he, he might I mean, light me up. Quarterbacks like a run, they definitely make the game more harder, I mean, as far as being a DB because you got to watch the scrambling and then him just throwing the ball. But, yeah. I mean, he – facts are facts, like you said, my man. I wouldn't – I prefer I, I prefer another another quarterback over him. Yeah, yeah. So Kelly yeah. Uh, in Toronto, March 11th through the 13th is the CFL Combine. Are there any names right. that 
uh, Brandon should be looking out for that he's going to be playing up against? Like any rookies that could come in and really make a mark next year? Uh, oh my God! Um, yeah, it's you know I don't really see anybody jumping off these pages too much. No. Uh, you know, there's some old linemen as there always is always. in the Canadian talent yeah. pool, and of always. course some defensive linemen, but. The defensive backs, uh, you know what? I, I don't even know if, if I followed the CIS closely enough to, to be able to evaluate these guys, the defensive backs. And, and uh, yeah, uh, I, I would probably say, if anybody, I'm rooting for the Regina Rams, of course, to do well at the regional combine in yeah. Edmonton and hopefully get that invite to the national combine. So. What in in Regina in the off seasons? Because I think that's one of the best places um, to go play at in terms of, you know, being able to play feel like a villain and play in front of a crowd. There's Hamilton, which I love hate Hamilton fans. They I think know you that definitely got to throw Ottawa up there though. As yeah. Far as, play, as far as a place to play in, I mean, yes. The watch. I mean, I I could say that maybe I'm being biased because I've watched the city grow from from being new to really being all the way behind us even when they was yeah. two and sixteen yeah. all the way us to flipping this flipping the whole script going to the to the Grey Cup. It's just it was just a, a great town watching them watching them build and grow and I I'll have to say that's a good environment to want to play in. Hey, hey, Kelly, I think he's running for mayor of Ottawa, man. That's a lot of I mean, Donald Trump campaigning it sounds like right there, are. man. It's like, it's no you doubt. got the key to the city? <laughs> hey, so, so, Kelly, tell the people where they can find you. Tell them about the CFL podcast. Like, I, I want to learn, like, tell the people out there because uh, I, I listen to some of the podcasts, man. You guys really uh, are really big fans of the game, and you bring facts oh, and with your perspective. So, as a player... We respect that. So what, what, when's the next podcast, and what's next on the journalist end of what you do? Yeah, the next podcast is actually in about uh, an hour and a half. Okay. Uh, we have one going on tonight. We do Sundays and Wednesdays every week okay. from 8 Pacific to uh, 10 o'clock p.m. And, yeah, we just we love doing it, as you say, and uh, it's a chance for us to, you know, get our outlet in and uh, – so that's why we created it, and you can get in touch with us there at Let's Talk CFL on Twitter or email us, uh, Let's Talk CFL at gmail.com. And um, me, myself, uh, as you mentioned, I'm a writer for lastwordonsports.com, mm -hmm. and uh, people can go to the website and click on North America, uh, click the CFL tab, and, uh, you know, somewhere in the first or second page you'll find one of my articles and uh you can click on my name to see my uh archives there on the site so hey for sure man and uh can you throw out your twitter name for the people as well what's that with your twitter name you, you oh know. yeah sure no problem it's uh l w o s which stands for last word on sport Ooh, of course and okay. then k bale so l w o s k b a l e at uh yeah hit me up on twitter Hey, so I thank you coming on, Kelly, man. Like, well, hold can, on, Brandon Kelly, wants to can ask, I ask you, you one more can question. Can I ask you a question before you get out of here, man? You, did sure, you uh, sure. Did you watch the the Grey Cup? I did, man. Yeah, it was fantastic. Did you Did you pay uh, close attention to the Grey Cup? Uh, yeah, fairly close attention. Um, I do have a five year old that comes up and interrupts me every twenty <laughs> minutes, but you you might know how that is. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a. Uh, that was a heck of a game, man. And uh, I was, I was, I was interested because you said you didn't, you didn't know who I was. So I was asking if you watched the Grey Cup. It was a very controversial call in the for the, like one of the last plays of the game that changed the game. So if you That's claim right. to watch the gate, the Grey Cup, you you would have seen, you would have seen Brandon Sermons all on there. So uh, yeah, you know, you know, uh, I have to apologize uh -oh. the way it was phrased. Uh, what I what I uh, <laughs> thought he meant was, do, do I know you personally? Like, do uh, I know you? Okay, I, I was just I just had to clear but, that up, yeah. you know. But Very I, familiar I appreciate with that. you, man, for sure. Okay, okay. Hey, well, thanks for coming on, Kelly, man. I'm gonna check that podcast out tonight. Um, you have yourself a great night, sir. For sure, man. Thanks for having me, guys. It's been a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Kelly Bell of Let's Talk Football Podcast. We really appreciate him coming on. See, I always like having a media perspective, too, because I don't look at myself as a media guy. Everyone's like, oh, you're media now. You talk, yeah. you talk. No, I'm a player that just looks good and goes on TV and, and talks about <laughs> football. You know, yeah, that's what it is. I was so, just trying to get some facts. <laughs> I, I felt some feelings coming out, out of the clarity. chair just hey, now. Hey, like, hey, you don't you know, know me? Like, do you ain't watch the Great Cup? You don't know me, bruh?
But yeah, I was, I was just saying. So I mean, you, if you if you uh, a reporter, I would have I would have figured you watched the Grey Cup. That's all I was saying. Yeah, in a little Facts. bit, we're going to have Brian Turner. Yeah, we're going to have Brian oh, Turner on here at the Winnipeg Blue Great. Bombers. But, hey, um, let's talk Let's talk a little bit of the Grey Cup, yeah, uh, B. Let's talk a little bit of the Grey Cup because, I mean, that's a game where everyone <laughs> feels as though you guys were the underdog in the situation. <laughs> but you you should have won that game. No. Yeah, we, should, we, we definitely should have won the game. But I would say uh, as a team, like overall, everybody, everybody, not everybody was ready as an overall team. And, uh. Everybody could have could have could have played their part a little better. So, I mean, you can't really point the finger at, at, at nobody but the whole squad. So, kind of talk about that experience, like running out there. You know, the week leading Man, up it, to it. It felt great, honestly. Um, it was it was just like the Super Bowl. I mean, I was I haven't played in the Super Bowl, but you know, being an American playing out there in the CFL in the, in the Grey Cup, the whole experience was lovely. It yeah. was beautiful. I'm talking about the whole week us staying out there in uh, Winnipeg. The fans are amazing from every team. The vibe Canada is just is is great, and uh, the the Grey Cup was it was a, it was well hosted. You what you want to know what's even better? That per diem. Oh. yeah. That per yeah. diem, that they gave, <laughs> yeah, that per yeah. diem for the week. It was a little like, like eight hundred, like seven eight hundred for the week. Nah, it was a it was a little more than that. It was all so y'all got more than what we got. That great cup yeah, here. Yeah, you know, you so. know they, they they go up every year on something. So yeah, so we're waiting. Uh, we're, we're gonna get Brian Turner on the line. Win uh Winnipeg D D lineman. I want to talk to him because I mean, like you heard Kelly say, Winnipeg made moves this off season in the um this off season in free agency. <laughs> Brought in all types of big names, former uh, like CFL All Stars and such. And BT is one of, like, if I was to say, just so you would know, it, BT's like one of the like Hanatas of the of the CFL. The dude's been balling for a long time now. And once we can get him on here, BT, where you at, man? I know you're watching at home. We're trying to call you on the Skype, so hop up on here, man. Uh, we're looking at his little Twitter profile right, picture right now. He's got his arms crossed and stuff. You can see on the screen when he hops up. So when do you when are you reporting back up there? When's mini camp? Kind of explain your little off season right now. Oh yeah, um, we got a we got a three day camp April twentieth to twenty twenty third, I yep. believe, and then uh, we come back we come back for a few weeks, and then we don't start another camp until the second the second week of uh, the end of the second week of May, and our first game is June thirteenth, and you know you just you just keep it keep it rolling. Yeah, <laughs> off season you get your workouts in. Next thing you know, is it June yet? So, I mean, it's a uh, we're going to get it started. We, we'll we be back out there in April. Where, where have you been training at? And kind of talk about what you do in your off-seasons down here in L.A. Well, out here, I've been uh, training at a TNT facility. It's actually out there in San Dimas. Um, okay. Yeah, so, but when I am out here in the Valley, I do I do just wherever I can hit the grass and put my ladder out and get my cones going, I get it in. And, you know, it's just all about your work ethic. If you want to grind, you're going to be able to grind wherever it's at, so... I mean, uh, he don't train with me no more. He got he got scared, Doctor. He don't train with you. He don't train he with got, you no more. Hey, he too busy for me, man. He be he be <laughs> doing. He be like, I got to train him. I got to go run track. I got. I'm like, man, hey, what's you know, up? Where you at? Hey, I'm, you work hard though. I tell you that he does work hard. He deserves. I appreciate that. I, I'm, we're waiting for Brian Turner right now. His, his Skype is offline. I, I gotta sit here and call him. Like, what's up, BT? What you doing, man? Yo, yo, they calling you on Skype right now, dude. Yeah, it says you're offline right now, but they're they're calling. Oh, they're calling. There he goes right there. There he goes right there, ladies and gentlemen. Brian Turner, defensive tackle for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Yeah, I thought you was, I thought you was about to uh, stun on me for a little bit, man. I was, uh, my bad. Gonna have to come check you out. What's up, man? I see you. I, I see you. I see you living good out there. You got the nice. Uh, that's what. That's nice. Is that velvet? Like you. You look like you living good, bro. What's good? No, I'm still, man. How you doing? Where do you do? Where do you do? You stay in your off seasons? You up there in Winnipeg, or you come back to the states? I'm in the states. I stay in Alabama. I'm okay. in um right outside of Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. Cause you went to UAB. You went to UAB, and you know you. You're, so you're from Alabama and such. Did you check out uh what was it what's that the bowl game the, the NFL bowl game the senior bowl did you senior bowl, yeah I went down there this year it's um it's in Mobile that's where I'm originally from okay but then Winnipeg yeah. started giving you that money and then you know you you moved on up like the Jeffersons huh uh, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right, all right, man. I don't want to put him on the spot. I don't want to put him on the spot. Not right there. really. So, so uh, I mean, have you have you been kind of checking out what uh, your organization has been doing in free agency with the moves and uh, in the signings? 
Yeah, it, yeah, it's um, we we got a pretty stacked team. It looked like right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, with Nick Moore coming in and such, what can you say would be the biggest area that you guys needed or or addressed um, this off season in terms of with free agency? Well, I thought it was. Um, I think it's safe to say, you know, our offensive line just you know kind of needed some work, I guess. And we had we had some guys that could get the job done, but we wrote we rotated through a lot of guys throughout yeah. the last couple seasons on the offensive line. Yeah. So it's kind of getting you know keeping Drew really upright is a big deal you know for our organization so i think we made some really good moves to make that happen so i'm looking forward to next year so what have you been up to this off season like in terms of your training and then what do you do in the off season in terms of like you know your passion because we obviously we can't play forever so what type of things are you doing um to start looking towards life after football well actually um i should have my real estate license come um okay. end of this week okay congrats I, yeah been working on that. I've been in a program to get my real estate license, and I'm finishing it up. Really, I already took one test. Got to take one more, and I, you know, I'll be a licensed realtor or you know, a real estate agent. So that's what I've really been doing. I've been training, um, working out with this new guy. Um, that's um, his name, Simeon Castile, but he, um, it's a thing called pure motion. Basically, it's yeah. a different type of training. Yeah, it's something you, could, you should look into. It's really nice. But I'm working out there, and I'm working out at UAB. With my old trainer, so it's a lot of um, good stuff going on down here right uh, now. Wait, 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 what you mean? I should look into. It. I hung my cleats up, bro. I do. I do a couple push-ups, right. grab my horchata and, and, and sip. I'm good to go, man. I, that working out stuff. I say, nah, no good. Basically, easy on the joints, but I, you know, like you want to stay in shape. Still, yeah. I know you got a lot of stuff going. You're an actor and a model and everything else. I do a little something, man. I do a little something, but but keep telling me more. Keep yeah, telling me more. Keep, man. Going. keep telling me more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what, what do you what do you look at, or what type of things do you expect from the teams this year, your team this year? Do you think this is a great cup or bust type year? Um, that's a good question. I think it's a I think it's a huge year for Winnipeg. I feel like um, it's a lot of stress on everybody, on players, coaches, GMs, CEOs, you know, fans. Everybody's you know we didn't we went to the Grey Cup and we ain't been to the playoffs in the last four years, yeah, so that's a big deal. Man. So, you know, I feel like they're trying to do everything in their power as far as, you know, upstairs to get this stuff done on the field. And I feel like they did a really good job of that. So I'm looking forward to it. Would you say that uh, your coach, Mike, is it Mike Shea, Michael Shea, do you, you feel like this could be a hot seat year for him if you guys don't produce and at least go to the to the uh, Western Finals or, or what? Um, I mean – and you never know. You know, I tell people all the time, don't try to figure out the CFL because you'll never figure it out. Yeah, you know, whether yeah. it's players coming in, players going, you know, coaches coming, coaches staying. You know, I, uh, we went to the Great Cup and our head coach was fired the next year, you yeah. know, and now he's back as our o offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. you, nobody never would have guessed that in a million years, right? Yeah. So you really can't, you really don't know, you know. You never know what's going to happen. You just try to control what you can control and go from there. And that's what we tell the young guys. So, so Brandon, right here, that's that's just that's this a vet telling you, right? Control what you can control because upstairs, you never know what's going on upstairs. You like you know. said, they went to the the Great Cup. Paul Law Police was fired the the off season following that, and I remember playing against the old Winnipeg when you guys were in the East, and you had you Hefney, Brandon Stewart. Hef. Right. Uh, oh, Jonathan Hefney? Jonathan Hefney. I played with him on the uh, court. They had Jovan Johnson over there. Jovan right? Johnson. Yeah, Yo, so I, I couldn't stand playing that's against these bad. cats, man. I hated playing against them. Shout like, out, Deuce. Jovan Johnson, good, JJ. Hef, Hef is good. Oh, Hefkin, boy, ball last year. He, he came back, he balled. He's a free agent now, but he balled last year. <clears throat> and you see how the shift in the in, uh, in the CFL is kind of going. Like, Jamel Richardson's out the league. Uh, Shea Emery just retired. Uh, Cornish just retired. You see all these new names coming in. What do you think of this new CFL and 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 how the CFL shifted and where it's going? Um, it's um, it's it's different. You know, one thing I want to say is the East and the West are two totally different, yeah. you know, conferences. Yeah, and you can really tell when you're playing in each. Like in the East, it's more of you know, I feel like it's more passing or whatever. You know, you kind of it's kind of typical of what guys do. In the West, I feel like it's kind of more up and down. You never really know what somebody's going to do. You know, teams yeah. got that thing like Calgary run the ball a lot. Yeah. And, you know, look forward to stuff like that. But it's um, it's different. But as far as the things changing, I feel like the biggest change right now is the one-year contracts. Yeah. 
Yeah, guys love that. Those, those, I love that. Lovely, right? I mean, you know what? It got me ready. You know what? When you when you say you're working out again, man, I might go. I might go try and put the cleats on one good time. Over here, man. I'm at TNT facility, man. Come come out there and get you some get you some band work in. I don't, I don't know Why about not? all that. I don't know about that. No, I'm a I'm a I'm a actor. I can act like I play football. You, you, you what, can act like you can still break what on something. What kills me? What kills me? BT like what, what kills me? I went on a Verizon commercial audition and they wanted real football players to go on there and like. I booked right. it, but I was an OCP, which means on camera principal. I was like yeah. a, a like a featured extra extra. I got I got good check for it and everything, yeah. but they really hired a dude who played basketball his entire life. It was just this big swole African dude. He was like, man, I don't I don't I don't play I don't, basketball. I didn't play football. I just you? play basketball. Uh, but they wanted him. That's what Hollywood is doing to me, man. I wanted that real check. But, you know, I, I still understand. got me a cool chat. We shot in uh, the, the Coliseum and all that. So, uh, hey, hey, B, go ahead and tell the people where they can find you on your social media and stuff, man. I don't want to hold you up. You sitting there look like you watching uh, Dave Chappelle show or something right now. <laughs> like The Walking Dead, really, but it's Blitz <laughs> <laughs> underscore Turner. It's um, that's my my um, what is it? Instagram. That's yeah. my Twitter. Yeah, and that's my um, Snapchat. Everything. You that's got your password. Snapchat. That's your password too. Man. You got Snapchat. Um, nah, well, I'm on Snapchat, but I don't really use it. It's oh, just, man. it's just there, really. So don't, oh, don't man. follow me on that. Okay, that's what's up, man. Hey, I thank you for uh, coming on, bro. You're my first uh, player that that actually plays, right? Current player that that did it via Skype and stuff like that, man. So I appreciate you, man. Go ahead back to watching Walking Dead and stuff, man. Well, I appreciate you having me, bro. No problem, man. Take it easy, bro. Are right, you yeah. too? Yeah, I mean, dude, used to he used to kill our offensive line. Like when we used to play against Winnipeg, I used to hate that man. He could still play; he's still up there balling. So I mean, now the you know we got the CFL out the way, fellas. It's time to change over. Let's talk a little NFL football. Talk some football. Let's talk a little NFL football. The biggest thing that's going right. Let's go get it. The biggest thing that's going on right now is the NFL Combine. Guys are. uh, What's it? What what, what do they call it? The shirt and like the, the shirt and short show. Guys uh, out there running the 40, shuttles, yeah, that sort of yeah, thing. You know, yeah. we, we don't need to really get so much into who's who and what's what's right now because we're going to talk free agency and the moves that are going to be made. But right now we got former um, Detroit Lion defensive back Paul Pryor, who is Dr. Speed himself, trains NFL, CFL, soccer. high school, soccer athletes about speed and stuff. Trent. The biggest thing in the NFL football, 40-40-40-40. 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. So kind of kind of talk 40 when you're training guys to run better 40s and kind of talk about how important a 40 is and what it measures for the people who really don't know out there. Yeah, well, you know, you know, some people, you know, if you run in a 4-6, you know, and you get with a, a great speed coach, they're not necessarily going to take it down to a 4-3 unless if you got to have some talent in order to run a fast 40, though. But, yeah, yeah the 40 does mean a lot. <laughs> Yeah. It means a lot for pro day. It means a lot for the combine, but it don't mean a lot for the game. Yeah, right. You know, when you get to OTAs, it's about how, how many how many reps what you doing in your reps and how you balling. And, and uh, you know, you know but but if you got to but if you got to lean on that forty to get in the door, then you got to lean on that forty to get in that door. And so that's how I look at it. So that's how I had to go run that four two four on them, <laughs> and, so then, and then four two eight on them, and then anytime I hit the I hit the uh, I hit the um. The, the the field where I do a forty, I'm doing four three or below, so that's what I got to do. Yeah, you got a uh, you got some speed over there, bro. I, yeah, I'm I, fast. I checked out your, your your thing you posted on Facebook. I said, look at this man yeah. right here. I've been beating dudes left and right lately. I'm looking for, for real. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, he for got Usain. out. I'm looking for you saying like, what's you saying that? You know. You ready for that? Is, is there anybody I'm out there? I want y'all to call in. We're gonna we'll start some race. Paul Pratt. I want y'all to hashtag race Paul Pratt. I, I think somebody out there on YouTube right now, one of our viewers, can beat you in a race. Is his name Usain Bolt? Come on, man. Yeah, he you didn't still, so you still running right, like that? You still running like that? You still yeah, think you, he, so he got you can it. run four three right now? What? You think yes. you can run four three right I, now? I feel like I'm, I'm faster than I ever was. <laughs> what? But so, I'm still getting out on him because I'm right there with him on the four three. Right. He, oh, he see, know that. I think I'm fast. A no, no, on he's really fast. I just tracked up with him. He's fast though. He got that. That, 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 I got, I got, I got, I got next man speed. So, all right, so yeah. in turn, all right, there's a forty. Yeah. Like forty is, is I guess acceleration. How fast the guy can run. Kind of talk about the three cone drill, the shuttle drills, those sort of things, <laughs> and what you would look at or how you could help some athletes. Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah, and I'm giving away secrets right now, but it's all good. Yeah, don't don't give them all away. Make sure you throw the website and all that if you go. Yeah, no, yeah, no. The game is to be sold, not told. Not told. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of but, I, but, but I but I throw some I, I throw some out. Um, I don't know how much my my mic. Um, am I on? Yeah, you on? Yeah, you on? Uh, they uh, you know, when I see a lot of people do three cone drill, that's the only drill they keep working, just for that drill. But you need to get your feet stronger, and you need to do a lot of other drills that that are way harder and way and not just that simple. You know what yeah. I mean? So when you do when you train your feet to go every direction. And when you when it's time to do that one little three cone drill, you'll kill it because you ready. You can attack it how you need to attack it. So do you think that that like transfers over to yes. the football field? What guys run their times and such? It can give you some of a, 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 a definition of who they are, how fast they can move. But like I said, you know, IQ is everything, and uh, I feel like you know the, the game is ninety percent you know IQ, and I think the more IQ you you you, you study, you know, you have. Yeah. And studying, I think the better you be off, and then let your skill set. Uh, I carry agree over. with that because I'm saying that I, I see the veterans. Uh, it's not about being all fast and everything anymore. It's about knowing the game and slowing it down. Yeah, yeah. and that yeah. really just comes with you be you being out there and and you putting in the time and the years and and developing reps. more. Yeah, reps. reps. Life is about reps. It's about reps. It's about reps. It's only and way you're gonna you gonna get see it. That. Yeah, and and one of the stories that really kind of sticks out to me is when I was in Detroit and I okay. was playing nickel and I was kind of. Uh, you know, you know when you're nickel, you're kind of a linebacker, and uh, the linebacker was getting to the B gap faster than me, and you know because he knew how to play it better. Yeah. And my D coordinator was like, "You're four two, he's four six. What 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 we need you out there for?" I said, "You're right. I am four two. <laughs> he's four six. He's beat me to the gap." So the thing is about knowing the gap and knowing the game a little faster and being ahead of the uh, ahead of the snap. And then once I learned the game more, I was I used my speed there. and IQ. I should be the guy if my speed and IQ is is better than somebody. And when you're talking knowing the game and IQ and such, nothing's nothing's bigger than knowing the game and having to make that jump than a quarterback. Yes. Quarterbacks coming in and they've got all these top quarterbacks in the in the combine right now and such, but how hard is it as a rookie, you know, for guys to come in or kind of explain your experiences coming in as 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 a rookie coming in and learning the playbook? To be able to play <coughs> fast. You want to go first? You go first. Cause rookie. Oh well, yeah. Actually, well, right now coming in from uh coming from uh, being American going to Canada, the game has changed drastically. Like it's yeah. it's a way bigger field and stuff like that. So I had to really get acclimated to that whole system and the receivers coming in and motion at me. And uh, the only way I could really do that is is to get in my playbook and yeah. and really stay stay and dedicate my time when. It's not when it's not time when when you think it's you're tired and you don't want to dedicate. That's when you got to dedicate that little extra yeah. three pages because yeah. those three pages can make you, the difference. Yeah, you get out there on the field, and you're like, dang, I seen this. I, but I mean, you're only gonna know what you're doing is if you put the time in to do it. So, yeah, um, I I really kind of struggle. You know what I'm saying? If I was being a DB, I was good at you know being outside though. But you know my inside uh, IQ is playing nickel. I was always afraid of it because I didn't really know how to. Play the game is faster, and I there. wasn't really coached properly though until like a player of mine, my friend, put me to the side and he showed me how to do it, and then I I was able to to be successful in that position. So was that much different playing on the outside? Because as a receiver playing on the outside, playing on the slot, it's it's, it's different for us. So to y'all, you like, oh man, I gotta play nickel right now instead of playing on the outside. I hated it. I, I, yeah. I, was not, I was like literally like. Not go, go, want to go in. I'll just be like, I'll just stay here. I, I was hoping they would release me. Like, I was so scared. I was like, I don't want to mess up. Because one of the times I looked like I was a, a chick with my head cut off when I was there. He's just saying, no, was going. motion. I was on all over the place. Yeah. like, what is he doing? But, they, they're, going, they're going to him. They, yeah, yeah. So it was like, I was like, but once I learned how to, how the nickel works, yeah, nickel works, it was just like, oh, okay. So, like, it's, we, it's reps slowing the game reps, down. Repetition. Reps slowing the game down. So, let's talk a little NFL free agency. It's a lot of moves going on. And last week uh, in the show, the first show, we talked quarterbacks. Today, since I'm a receiver and we've got some DBs here, we're going to talk to free agency with what receivers are out there, what DBs are out there. We can start with wide receivers. There's a list of guys, man. There's a long list of guys. And since I am the wide receiver, I will go out and talk my top three. Muhammad Sanu from the Cincinnati Bengals. There's uh, Malcolm Floyd with the San Diego Chargers. And there's also uh, my last one, Nate Washington of the Houston Texans. I think those are the top three. Nate Washington gets slept on. 
And I know these guys are starting to go, get up there in years, and you know how it is once you hit 30 in the NFL or in the CFL or in sports in general. In sports. It's like once you hit <laughs> 30. Baseball, 30, 30, 30 baseball, baseball, you're you a rookie. More. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything but baseball. Everything but baseball. Every, yeah, everything but baseball. So the, those are really my type, my top three, um, my top three free agent wide receivers out there. Do you think those guys like Malcolm Floyd? You think there's a chance of him staying with San Diego? Is 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 that just something where it's like, all right, you've been here for a long time. You are what you are. It's time to move on. Okay, hold on. Do you think Malcolm Floyd's better than uh, Colson? Right now. Right now. I would give Colston a, a 81 overall on Madden. I would give Malcolm Floyd. On oh, Madden? <laughs> Malcolm Floyd at a 79, okay. 80. But how, they're, how, they're the same player to me. But how did you not include Jeffries from Chicago? He, he just I mean, Alshon Jeffries, yeah. I mean, like, he, he's going to sign he, back with Chicago. They're he, not going to let him back. He's better when well, he's a free agent. They're not, he's better, well, he's a free, he's better than all. He's the best one on the board right now. I, he's, he's well, him and Sanu are the best two receivers on the board. Sanu... It's time for him to be a number one receiver. He's going to go somewhere and go get paid. You know who I like? Uh, I like Kelvin Benjamin. He's like, a free agent right now? Uh, I'm not sure, but I was just thinking nah, about he, the, receiver, the receiver game. Right. And uh, when it comes to receivers, I will, have to, I will, give, him, I will give him his stars because uh, he's, he's a physical dude, really. He's coming yeah. off an injury. Cam really could have used him this year. Yeah, he, but uh, um, that, I think that was uh, one of the crucial, uh, one of the crucial, crucial points in the, I mean, in the Super Bowl. And, and looking at the list of all the free agents, there's only a couple of people that's like kind of like credible to me. Everybody else is just a jag. It's just another guy. What? Travis Benjamin, he's credible. Who? Travis Benjamin from uh, the Cleveland Browns. He was their number one target since Josh Norman got that that piff problem. Yeah, but somebody got to be number one in the team. I mean, you good. All right, so I mean, Travis <laughs> Benjamin, they'll they'll keep him. You don't know what's going to go on with Josh Gordon. You don't know if he put that down for good. Um, Ricardo Lockett from the Seahawks, yeah. Jermaine Curse, he ain't bad. Marvin Jones, not that bad. J the Jags, Percy Harvin's up there. He's exceptional, but he's injury prone. Uh, Wes Welker, but I ain't gonna. Ruben Randall, like there's some. Well, Wes Welker died. <laughs> 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 there's some there's some names out there that can hurt that can help some teams. Like let's think, all right, Marvin okay, Jones. Okay. Let's say let's say uh Marvin Jones or or Sanu. No, Marvin Jones is the one that that's 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 up for free Sanu's, agency. Sanu's pretty good. Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins could use the number I one. I think receiver. a lot of people could use Marvin Jones. He's nice. And uh, he's a big big well, threat. There's a there's a guy he's on fast. there that's from the University of Nevada board uh, not my board, but Rashard Rich Rashard Matthews from the Dolphins, he's nice. I think he's he's probably one of the underrated uh, free agents right now. All right, so you got Jarvis Landry, who's a hundred plus catch guy, who's yeah. he's a monster. Yeah. You have to have a number two with him, and Marvin Jones would be that, a great number be a two nice for him. Though. That would be a great combination. That'd be, that'd be straight. Yeah. I think that'd Just be a think nice of other the 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 Titans. We could use one. You could use a receiver. The Patriots could use a number one receiver. I'm not. I'm. The Patriots did use a DB. They play receiver. They use Matt Slater. Yeah. Matt Slater. I was just talking to his dad a couple weeks ago. I was yeah. Like, oh, yeah. He, Matt he, Slater. Good. Matt Slater. I'm just saying, there's there's guys out there. Lance Moore. What, so. Lance Moore is up there in age, so you kind of gotta. Those guys probably have to wait till after training camp to yeah. get signed. I mean, like, like I said, like, like I got, I, you know, me being in the NFL and getting kicked out the way I got a cold heart towards it. But I understand what GMs look at it though. They're like, if I'm looking at the list, I'm not tripping on none of them dudes. Mm -hmm. Not one dude on here. You I mean, only like a, I'm, probably only get, I'm probably getting Mar Marvin Jones for that same reason over in Miami. Dang, y'all, y'all not respecting anybody on nah, this I, list. I don't there. respect we, we receivers. There's some guys. <laughs> that's some guys that can play on this list, man. Like, no, I, some said, guys I said, I said the Jags, but play. I mean, I mean, blockbuster free agency. All right, so there's one three of on this list that know? can get that can get a big big deal. Jeffries, that's the, he's the biggest name on the list. Ashawn Jeffries, Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones is bald last year, and then what's the well, last one? Who did Marvin Jones play for? Muhammad Sanu, the Cincinnati Bengals. He, uh, one of them's got to go. Went to Etiwana, then he played at uh, Cal. One so, of them got to go. Oh, okay. You you yeah, mad because he, he, he just don't dude. like the he don't like the NFL. I don't like the NFL right kinda, now. All right, I don't want to go off. I don't want to go <laughs> off key NFL. too much, but the viewers they, they're gonna want to know what was the story, man. Oh, oh, well, why my yeah, exit? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? You just you just can't uh. You can't uh, uh, burn bridges, put it that way. Okay, you know okay, I mean? we're just going to leave it at that then. <laughs> so, Ruben Randall, do the Giants keep him? He's he's solid. Giants, they do good with their receivers. You know, 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I think they do. I mean, they they can make somebody average better. I feel like. Dang. So you saying Eli's that type of quarterback then? Well, I mean, you know, Eli's a good quarterback. I know he kind of look like he's he's not he's out of it though, but he, I think he's focused a lot. And, I, and I, you know, you know, my people that that play with him, including <coughs> you, and, and, you know, Steve. You know, he he he's clutch. We need to be clutch. He just he had a good year last year. He had a real good year last year. But, but and, no and, and, and if Eli likes you, he he'll throw he's the ball to you. He's gonna get the ball. He's gonna get you ball. All right, so let, let's go to DBs because y'all are just straight up bashing the receivers I and mean, the quarterbacks. I mean, I, I keep it real. I mean, I keep it real with receivers. He's got though, two Super Bowls. Good. Look, look. I mean, come on now. So let's go. Let's go over the cornerbacks. Y'all's DBs. I'll let y'all run this one because I don't like it. DBs. They just line up. Y'all just get it. Well, uh, you know, we can start with uh, you know his his ex teammate and our. All combined training partner, I guess, Cromarty, and, and he got Sonia. cut. Yeah, he uh, he well, he's this going on his uh, his eleventh uh, year. Eleventh year. Yeah, yeah. he's he been in the game for a while. I mean, he is a veteran. That guy he knows the game, and it's nothing like having a veteran cornerback on your team to to teach the younger dudes the game. And that just that speaks for itself. He can still run around and, and get it done. Uh, I I would I would sign him somewhere. But can you say that's a guy who gets signed in training camp? 11th yeah. year, you know, come on now, 11th year. He don't want to do camp. He don't want to do training yeah, camp. Yeah, but he's very athletic, though. And yeah. He knows the game. He can play the game at a high level. Were you there that time we were uh, we were training? He jammed me out of bounds? Yeah, I was here. He, I, he, 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 I watched him do that a lot He jammed me out of bounds, yo. He I was sitting he, there he like, You know what? He couldn't do T.O. like that, though. He couldn't do T.O.? Not like that. No way. Yeah, T.O.'s T.O. still nice. out there training. T.O. Nice. T.O. still – what's what's T.O. look like? I, I don't want to shift it because we're still going to go back and we're going to talk about T.O. is the best offseason. He's, he's nice. the best. He's the best free agent right now. <laughs> nice. For sure. For sure. So what other DBs y'all got on the list? Because uh, I'm looking at Will Blackman, Prince Akamu. Prince. I, I we mean, have Prince. Amuka, I'll say uh, I know that uh, I think uh, San Diego – or not San Diego, uh, the Rams, the, the new Los Angeles Rams is looking to franchise, franchise tag uh, Tremaine Johnson. And probably Jermaine Johnson keep him over there for a while and and, and make some make some money because he had a he had a great year coming off coming off uh just being new for him to be coming to a free agency he had a great year and performed very well. So what do the Carolina Panthers do with Josh Norman? Do you pay him if he asks for a hundred million? That do man. you give him a hundred million? That's why I wrote you him can't. Him. Pay, pay you can't pay him. Why uh-huh. you said a hundred mil? Yeah. If I'm him, I'm asking for whatever Revis got plus some. Okay, but he showed he that he could play like Revis. He got exactly. He did. You know what? He invites. He invites the pressure and he rises up. And, and when Drop two on. picks in the Super Bowl, bro. He did drop two picks. Drop two picks did. in the but, Super Bowl, but he didn't give up no. He didn't give up no touchdowns. He, and you know what? They that was balling. He got the holding penalty on the uh, on Demarius Thomas. He did it. He did he his thing. Hard, I think you're like, like DBs. <laughs> <laughs> My thing is, I think you gotta. Uh, what, what would you do with him? Not pay him and and. I mean, you might have to franchise tag him, but at the same time, it, the franchise tag that Kirk Cousins is gonna get, which is twenty one mil, if they franchise tag him, to he's gonna Cousins. get because you gotta average the top five salaries of your position. Quarterbacks yeah. get that. The, I mean, quarterbacks get the most money out of everybody, so he's going to get 21 mil. Josh Norman, I think they were saying that he might, like, top five for DBs was what? Somewhere around, like, like 12 to 15 million. Is he's he? A, he's, you know what? I watched this game. I, I paid attention to it. Everybody say he always doing cover three. He does. But you know what? In the system at Carolina, he, Man, does, he does what he does. They, they said the same thing about Richard Sherman with the cover three. I feel like you know what. That's crazy. No matter man. what it is, everybody's you know gonna have their opinion. You gonna have your opinion, but some know. But as long as you are taking care of business and you playing and being successful in your within your defense, uh, it's only defense that matters. It's your defense. All right. So here's a name, a very controversial name. Um, Pac-Man Jones. Has he played his last down in the C? Uh, not the CFL in the NFL. No, he. he's, he's Really? At, even after that? After what? Even after the, the meltdown at the end of the game. Against uh, the Steelers, he was just standing up for his uh, his 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 former teammate. So you that fifteen, all right. So now that you, if you're a teammate, it, now on. you don't get that check. Now you don't get that NFC uh, Championship game check. Yeah, it, you still like, oh, he was just standing up for somebody. You think that's gonna keep him out of the NFL? That's not gonna keep him out of the NFL. If, if all mean, the other stuff didn't keep him out, why would that keep him out? He's he's up there in age. He's up he's he's up there in age. Yeah, but, he had a good, but, he, he had, but he hasn't shown any. Any uh, decline, any decline in his, in his game? Really, he's been pretty consistent. So is and he? I, all right, I, I is he done in Cincinnati? Consistent. Is he done in Cincinnati? Who's the coach of Cincinnati? Hugh, 
Marvin, Marvin Lewis. Lewis. No, he's not done. Are you sure? He keeps all the brothers there forever. Of course not. He's not done in Cincinnati. Who Damn. gonna get rid of him? Oops. Why would I, they get rid of him? I thought he would be done after all that, man. After after he wasn't, that fifteen yard penalty, he wasn't the penalty. one making the spectacle of himself. It was the other guy, the other Bur Burfect. Burfect. Yeah, but then he got into it with uh, Joey Porter, which ultimately was that last fifteen yard penalty. Okay, gave but him he a had chip a, shot. He had a reason to get into it with Joey Porter. Why is Joey Porter all up in the, so up you, in the mix? Like are that? you condoning a fifteen yard penalty in no, a situation no, like that? No, is not that what at all. you're saying? They, they got what they deserve. They got to be in the all season. If you was in the in the Grey Cup. If y'all were, if it was a close game and somebody on, it was Frazier, and Frazier did, Eric Frazier, what well, on, that Eric Frazier, who's number seven? Oh, no. Uh, on, with Ottawa. Uh, Maurice Price? Nah, nah, nah. Oh, the, the DB, the, 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 the Caucasian DB. Number seven? That was, was that it number was, six or number seven? Number, he played Sam. He You're played, talking about number six. Yeah. That's, uh, that's Bruno. That's yeah, yeah. Bruno. Okay, so I'm just using his name just for, just, yeah. just for reference. If it was a close game. And he got a 15-yard penalty to keep a drive going or for them to kick a, get in the field goal range. What would the locker room be like after that? You just, you just got to let Man, you're going to hate I me. mean, it depends on the penalty. It that type of penalty. And who, that, and, and who the person is doing the penalty. You know, he has okay, like, so he has, Pac-Man he has a, Jones. Pac-Man has a, he has a lot of cachet. He can make a mistake like that. Now, he won't do it again. You make a cut, but he, but he has a great That's the thing. Year. I think that's, that's the key, what you said. It's about... If it you think he going will he will he do it again or not? Okay. Because then you come in, you do have a second offense, then it's like okay, now you really being selfish. Pac Man Jones been pretty, you know. Pretty yeah, he's good. been I'm, he's been good. I didn't I didn't hear anything about Pac Man negatively. Uh, he's been under just he's now. been under wraps for but a he's, while. He's man. played he played a good season last year. He yeah. had a really good season yeah, last year. Let's like name that. a couple of other of these names. There's William Gay with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He had a solid game uh, year last year. I think he's. Him. Yeah. He's over like a ninety on Madden now. Wow! They put him like ninety or something. I remember when I, I was, with the, was, Steelers, he, he was with the Steelers. He he he, he, he was. got me. He got me on like two. I remember two vividly. Remember two. He used to play with the Patriots too, right? Now he went to the Arizona Cardinals. He never played with the Patriots, did he? I think. Oh, I don't, there's, there's man, these dudes are bouncing around so much. There's, a Super Bowl. there's also Janoris Jenkins of the Rams. There's Mike Jenkins of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There's Jeremy Lane with the Seattle Seahawks. Tremaine McBride. Nah, you, you don't have to pay him. The biggest, Terrence Newman. Is he done? Because I'm talking T-Nude. older guys now. T. New. I mean, yeah, They'll draft I, I somebody. I wouldn't pay for him. They'll draft somebody, though, right? You got to bring, because he started last year. I don't know. They, I, I, think they'll, I think they'll keep him around. See, DBs, man, you can always get somebody in there and play in the system and play good for you. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's different than receivers. He does know that D coordinator. He does know yeah. where to be. But, I mean, it's like, I, I wouldn't pay for him. Exactly. So we're, we're speaking as as, so for, I'm as saying, players you, you and we're speaking as GMs. As GMs. No, I'm yeah. not paying. I'm not, I'm I'm not, not, paying I'm not breaking the bank for him. No way. I'll give him the league minimum. You don't for, have to break the bank for him, though. You can keep him around, but you won't have to break. You think he's going to ask to get the bank broken on him? No, 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 no. I'm just saying I would give him league minimum for whatever. How many years and is that? Like 13, 14 for that? And make, and make him compete. And make him lose. compete. I, I'm it drafting will. someone to come in and to take his job. I just sit you and, down. and at least I'm still keeping him around. At least I'm still keeping so him around. To make him compete. Because and, the the rookie probably comes into training camp, gets hurt. T. Newman has to start. And then, you know, then you just, you they just battle it out after that. They might have to learn what's the system, something like that. So I, I, I mean, a, a player like T. New, he already knows the business of it, though. So and I'm sure they can be really, like, you know, up front with him. You know, up front with him, like, hey, this is what it is. And he'll understand. He won't be mad. You know, it's a paycheck. You gonna get it? You gotta earn your paycheck. So. Gotta earn your paycheck. Yeah. Y'all play fantasy sports? No. You know I, I haven't don't. gotten into that, man. You haven't gotten I, I, into I, it. I heard. I always hear about it. They walk around the locker room with the little fantasy signups, and I just never get into it. What you, about you? you? Players, players don't play fantasy. I know a lot of football players that that they may play it, but they just hate it. It's addictive, but they hate it. Wow. And if you're thinking about playing fantasy, then you after this. You people at home, hurry up. Go to DraftKings.com right now. We want you to use the promo code TAPOUT, and you can play free with your first deposit. Oh, yeah. Football season, I know we got a little ways to go, right, but if that. you go to DraftKings.com right now and sign up, you use that, ta- uh, you use that tap out promo code, you're going to be good to go for this season coming up. So you I mean, think you're gonna play this year after? The, what, 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 I mean, I mean if, you, free if, you, if you're saying it like that, man, I might have to check it out. You said DriveKings. DriveKings.com. What's the, what the promo code? Tap out. 
I'm All not. Right. A, I'm not. I'm not a gambler like that. So I don't. I don't do things like you, that. You, don't, you, don't, you, don't you, like you never shot like dice. Vegas. You never play like, play man guy, for money or nothing. Very, very you, you don't. I, don't, I don't. I don't take risks like that. Only in uh, sports. <laughs> You got same guy. Guys. He says conservative. The same guy that was at the mall earlier today. Well, I had to get this hat, man. It kind of reminds me of uh, <laughs> yeah. Jackson Five back in the day. So, hey, who? who, who all right, so NFL style, like this guys. There's, there's, you know, now the guys coming on the weight trips and everything, putting those suits on, looking yeah. fresh, going out, looking fresh. Who'd you say got the best style in the NFL? <sighs> Tom Brady. Uh, I would say Von Miller. He, he, he. he Pretty fresh. So you like the cowboy hats and cowboy boots with yeah, the suit yeah. and all that. I like that. I like that with the phone. Y'all West Coast cats, man. Y'all I like, different. I, I like Tom Brady, man. I, I like that. You know what? We all just we always we were in Tom Ford all day long. <sighs> all day, every day. And when your wife a supermodel. <laughs> yeah. Come, Come on, on, man. Like, like, like I like, I like Von Miller's suit style. It's more like, what, kind of like what I'm wearing right now. But if I was Tom Brady and had Tom Brady money, I'd be wearing a Tom Ford right now. Right now. Right now, <laughs> right now. Right now. Right now. I, got this. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a little snazzy in my shirt, but he can sit down next to me. I'm right down. Make it cover up. Like, like, you know, like, that's how you come That's how you come on, Tom. That expensive cologne talking. He got the big trench coat, Tom. Tom Brady got the style. Yeah, 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 hey, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to wrap this show up, man. I thank you all for coming in today, man, coming and hanging out. Y'all got the popcorn. You got the beverages, I hope. We got the two. Because I knew what's my tea because I got park on all Oh, it's, I thought I was smelling something. <laughs> Go ahead and tell the people where they can find y'all on the Go social ahead, media, Paul. man. Uh, yeah, uh, you can find me at my um, my company uh, at Second Wind Performance 2 N D W I N D Performance at Second Wind Performance. You gotta have your second win to win. Yeah, okay. Really? Hey, uh, this is your boy Brandon. You can find me on uh, Instagram at Brandon Bugatti, and uh, my oh, Twitter wow. is Brand Brandon underscore and uh yeah man hit me up and uh we, we could link and keep in touch you guys hey Thank I, you for having I, me I, up can, here, I can't stand people who have an underscore in their social media names, I, I don't right? want an underscore I had to I'm I'm driving, just, yeah, like, like, I can't like, do I don't all want that underscore. I wanted hey, to and I had to look for the underscore I'm like wait I'm oh, like man. come on man makes the it underscore so hard, pisses man. me off too hey you guys can find me at cultured athlete and brendanlondontv.com if you want to see what I'm up to living this LA Hollywood life Actor, model, TV host, and one hell of a guy. Thanks for watching After Buzz TV football offseason show. Make sure you check out check out After Buzz TV. Hit them up. Show them love, too, because they give hosts like me a platform to come and express myself. We want to thank you guys for watching. Check us out next week, which will be Thursday. We'll be back to our Thursdays. I actually did the Maury show. I uh, co-hosted a segment on the Maury show. No, oh, no. that's not my baby. I no, didn't. It was I didn't not do it. I test. Didn't, <laughs> but Chad is not my son. Hey, hey. No, I didn't. I didn't he do didn't that. I hosted a, a segment called uh, "Caught on Camera," and I talked about hey. outrageous viral videos. So that'll be coming out. I'll be sure to plug y'all with that. And uh, keep us keep us in the loop. Let us know what we should be talking about next keep week in turn loopy. of I, free agency, can I, can NFL, I say CFL. Two words. two words. I got two words. Steph Curry. I just, I just, it's not uh, fair. I thought it was football all season. Football. I know, but he, I, I, I had, I was like, why is he, yeah, why is he so yeah, nice? Yeah, 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 Yuri. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had, I just had to give, I had to give a shout out to all Steph right, Curry. All right, cut in, guys. On, on, that, on that note, after Buzz, we need to cut in. We need to Thanks cut in. <laughs>